Let's take a closer look at the new Red Bull RB22 for the 2026 F1 season. First of all, we have to say we traditionally have to be careful with Red Bull car launches, as they often don't show anything important until the car really hits the track at the first test. In the past, Red Bull presented old cars as new cars or the official FIA show car with fair livery, and because the Red Bull livery is basically the same every year, there was not much to see. Because of a big rule change, they cannot show the old car this time, and also the management of the team changed significantly in the last year. So what we saw on stage during the car launch was, as expected, just the standard show car with their now glossy livery. But what we could see in the renderings was a very different car. And this seems to be an early version of the new Red Bull, but it shows us in which direction teams are developing. So let's take a closer look at this. As described in my previous videos about the regulations, also Red Bull decided for a higher nose to have more space for the front wing underneath. And just as we discussed in my CFD video, Red Bull also uses two stalks for their front wing and one actuator for the flap in the center. We can also see the hinges and Red Bull seems to rotate both flaps as one assembly, instead of rotating them individually. And they do the same at the rear wing. That gives you less frontal area and less drag on the straights. It also allows them to adjust the upper flap individually. The end plates are curved inboard to guide flow along the inner side of the wheels and the foot plate and outboard vanes manage the flow around the front wheels. So teams already start preparing outwash for the front wheel wake here and we will see lots of detailed work in this area. This continues with the elements on the inner front wheel cover which make sure to keep the inner flow attached instead of creating a big inwashing separation bubble. Also, we can see that Red Bull is using a pushrod front suspension here. This can have to do with the attempt to keep the upper wheel cover as clean as possible to be able to create more outwash here. In side view, we see that the floorboard looks pretty much as we predicted in my earlier design videos, with one vertical outboard pointing element followed by three horizontal elements. These elements are upwashing and by adjusting them you can manage the pressure difference between the inboard and outboard side, which helps to build higher pressure in front of the side pod to push the front wheel wake outboard. The side pod inlet looks very similar to last year's car and as we said before, this could still change quite a bit until the first race. Red Bull uses large downwashing side pods again, but they are not as long as the ones we could see on the Audi. You can do this if you can reliably keep the front rear wake away from the rear wing. So by pulling the side pod in early, you can guide more clean air to the back and produce more downforce. But again, only if you can manage the position of the front rear wake reliably. The mirrors look still very simple and I expect teams to use the outside mirror stock to generate more outwash. Cockpit losses are guided to the back through this path, although it doesn't reach to the back. So these losses will sit lower at the back, which is fine in this generation of cars, since the diffuser is lower and the beam wing technically doesn't exist anymore. Instead, teams create more downwash again to get more clean air to the back for more downforce. In top view, we can basically see three parts of the bodywork. The side pods, the center part with fuel tank and engine, and what we can call the outlet trumpet. So a structure which grows from the middle and positions all cooling losses underneath the rear wing. And as we described in my rear wing design video, teams will try to load the two rearward flaps more to lose this downforce and hence drag when the wing is open. On the Red Bull we see exactly that. So a relatively flat first element and cranked up flaps, which will be flat on the straights. Red Bull also showed us a 3D model of their engine during the launch, but at this time of the year, and because it's Red Bull, we should be careful with what we see here too. No engine manufacturer would voluntarily show their real engine right now, and if they do, they would add some funny features to confuse the competition. So we see a very simple engine with a very simple turbocharger, and it will take a while to get a look at a real engine. And in this year, the energy management, power and fuel development will become very important. If teams are falling behind on this side, the aerodynamic details won't help. So all in all, it's good to see at least an early version of the new Red Bull RB22, which shows us in which direction the F1 teams are taking the development and which confirms the assumptions we took before the season. Let me know how you like the new Red Bull RB22 in the comments below, check out my other videos and see you next time.